As of this hour, America's schools will be on a new path of reform and a new path of results. We had better be serious about education. We have to pick up our game and raise our standards. Our education reforms will help parents send their kids to a school of their choice. Enough talk. It's time for action. The school system is outdated. Standardized testing is a practice that's not only unnecessary, but detrimental to the health of our youth. A, a problem with a standardized test is it assumes that everybody has this certain base of knowledge and not everybody has that. And so, you know, it's one of those things where we need more opportunities other than just a one-shot standardized test uh, that is super high stakes to really uh, to assess student learning. Students study and learn for these tests like they're told and supposed to. But after that, everything that they drilled into their short-term memory is forgotten and goes to no use. An example of that is, is back when I was teaching. I was teaching in the classroom <clears throat> and my students were taking a test. And um, uh, it, was, it, was a, um, it, it was a standardized test that they were taking. So I wasn't la allowed to answer any questions. All I could do was kind of say, well, do your best, reread the question, and that's all I could say. But this girl raised her hand, and she was um, doing her very best on it, but the, it was a math test, and the question was about baseball. And it was asking about innings and using the number of innings in a game uh, to, to come up with the solution to the problem. Um, the problem was, and she goes, what's an inning? The curriculum has stayed the same, but it's not efficient and doesn't help students in the real world. The rise of standardized testing and the, the increased uh, discipline on teachers to try to sort of force teachers to teach to those tests has resulted in a reduction in critical thinking on the part of students um, and a narrowing of the curriculum. Um, I, I don't think it has lowered the graduation rate significantly, but it definitely has affected the quality of education that, that the students are getting. This education system is setting up our children for failure. 90% of the funding for K-12 schools comes from state and local governments, which is largely generated by sales, property, and income taxes. Due to so much of the money going to schools coming from property taxes, we've created a system in which a rich neighborhood with a large property tax base has well-funded schools. But in poor neighborhoods, it's exactly the opposite. Funding for teachers is absurdly low, especially for districts in poverty. Students would have art, they'd have music programs, they'd have a lot of things that, that students in other schools wouldn't have. Um, so there needs to be, you know, uh, we, we've had for a long time this system where the money flows to those that already have the most money and we need public funding that, that really is more tailored to address the needs of the students and the demands of the students and, um, and does some, goes some way to compensate for some of the wealth inequality that's, you know, that, that we have in our communities. Schools should allow the youth of the United States to learn and develop an understanding of our world. So tell me, if it's so important, why are we letting our education system fail so many of us? Why are we letting ineffective learning techniques like memory-based testing take over and dictate whether a student is actually capable or not? Why does a numerical score on a standardized test decide a child's future? Most schools don't even prioritize giving their students the best education possible. They focus on meeting the minimum requirements to operate. Not only that, but some people can't even go to school because it isn't even affordable. When children can't even get the basic education that they need to succeed because it's too expensive, you know that something is wrong. That's why I stand today, tomorrow, and every day in solidarity with America's teachers demanding more resources for our educators and the young people that they have dedicated their lives to. Our nation's future depends on it. You know, 
know, I, I get the principle of local control. I totally understand that. We have lots of debates about that. But I always say we have 15,000 school districts in our country, 15,000. And I don't know of a single district in America where they systemically, systematically find, identify their best principals, their best teachers, and place them with the kids and communities who need the most help. So but we need to help those kids all the time. That's the bottom line. History is not kind to idlers. Well, if there's any word to describe too many parts of American education today, it's idle. Embrace the thing that makes America great, freedom. So what's the solution? The painful truth is that there is no simple answer to this.